Chip Hanauer in the Circus Circus will be defending his title on this two and a half mile River Oval. While Scott Pierce, after his Miami win and Mr. Pringles, will be seeking his second straight victory. And Jim Kropfeld and the Miss Budweiser will be gunning for Hanauer to take the Detroit championship. IPI Sports brings you the HFC American Hydroplane Series. This third national stop, the Budweiser Spirit of Detroit race. The fastest race boats in the world will be challenging the Detroit River at one of the toughest race courses in front of more than 600,000 fans for over $175,000 in purse money and for points toward the national championship. The American Hydroplane Series and the Budweiser Spirit of Detroit race are sponsored by Household Finance Corporation, America's financial resource. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. I'm Jim Hendrick along with Dick Crippen on the shores of this two and a half mile oval Detroit River course. Perennially a tough course, Dick. It certainly is, and it's one where you have to survive the course. We've had a lot of equipment lost here in the past. We've had a lot of drivers that have found out this course can change in the matter of a race. It can rough up on one end, be smooth on the other end. We had a qualifying record set by the Miss Budweiser just the other day. We expect that there could be record speeds out here today. Yes, and of course the two top qualifiers have drawn each other for Heat 1A. So right off the bat, Chip Hanauer and Jim Jim Cropfield go head to head. And I think we better remember that uh, Miss Budweiser is getting back into the racing circuit with Jim Cropfield now coming up with some good points. Chip Hanauer has always had good fortune on the Detroit River. He's one of the few drivers in history that can claim good luck on, the, on this river. And the Winston Eagle, much improvement. As to the Pringles, of course, the winner of the last race. We've got a Donnie Brook coming, and we'll have it all for you in just a moment. Back here on the Detroit River, we are in corner number four, the rooster tail turn looking at the skyline of Detroit, where the world famous Coba Hall holds forth every year with the automobile show. It's an ethnic city with entertainment, museums, and the world champion Detroit Pistons. A sports city, a fun city, a city of fine food, dining, entertainment, a productive city. Detroit the Renaissance City. Over 600,000 expected here today. We're in the Bill Muncy Memorial Pits where the crowd is arriving. Let's go down to Dick Crippen with Bernie Little. Bernie, let's talk about last week. Not the best of races for you, but you're back at it again. Yeah, uh, the crew got everything put back together uh, real quickly. Uh, we spun out in Miami and cost us the final heat. Uh, we come here to Detroit and as you've seen, set a new world record yesterday, 152.3 something. Uh, Miss Budweiser is running outstanding, and uh, uh, we have drawn the Circus Circus in the first heat, and I think we're going to really see a fine boat race. Well, Bernie, one thing about the Detroit River course, it is a racer's course, and finally you're on one that you don't have to be tricky with. Yeah, you're right. Detroit River is probably uh, one of the toughest courses on the circuit. Uh, you got some awful nice holes down there and across to the Yacht Club, and it takes a good driver to finish this race. But one thing about the Detroit River, it's consistent. It sure is. It's bad. <laughs> And he should know because he's been bitten here before. Old Boy Alberto Heat 1A will be driven by George Wood Jr. Chip Hanauer qualified 151.4 to drive the Circus Circus. Here's a new sponsor for this boat, the Miss Sun Deck, driven by Ron Snyder. The fastest qualifier at 152.5, Jim Cropfield in Miss Budweiser. And rounding out the field will be the Miss DOC Ray Band, driven by Mitch Evans. Weather looks pretty good, Dick. It certainly does. 67 degree temperature, 59 percent humidity, wind southeast at five and mostly sunny. They expect temperatures to reach up into the 80s today. Let's take a look at the starting lineup in lane one at Circus Circus, lane two, Miss Budweiser, DOC Ray-Ban in lane three, Sundeck lane four. Oh boy, Alberto just a hair off the pace as they come down to the starting line. Circus Circus is going to take control at the start. As they come down to the Carwood starting line, across from Belle Isle, it's a leaping start for the Circus Circus as he dives down the corner number one with the Budweiser right on his hip. 
Chip Hanauer trying to hold that speed up high, takes a little bit of a wider turn than usual down in turn number one as he tries to continue in the leadership role for this first race of 1989 on the Detroit River. A good start for Chip Hanauer, but the Miss Budweiser just about two boat lengths off him as they come out of the turn onto the back stretch, and they are really punching the pedals. This could be the smoothest part of the course because the Belle Albany Beach lets the waves dissipate on the sand and it does not roll back on the boats like it does down the front chute off of concrete barriers. But the point right now, coming to the Detroit Yacht Club, this is where the current splits to the Detroit side and to Windsor, Ontario, Canada side and can create some holes. But look at him hanging on the hook, Dick. He certainly is. He's got the skip fin dug into the water and he gets a beautiful execution out of that turn. Chip Panauer with a tremendous speed as he comes down back across the start finish line. Miss Budweiser still pushing hard as they complete the first lap here on the Detroit River. Chip Panauer doing a great job of driving. He's got his eye on the Miss Budweiser and they are really battling it out as they go back into the turns again. 145.232 miles per hour. That is a course record by the American Powerboat Association for competition on a two and a half mile course. And we might add in there a little description of that. That means competition against other boats. They have to have a certain amount of boats starting. That is a record speed, and the reason is this guy, because Jim Cropfeld is pushing Circus Circus around that course and forcing Chip Hanauer right there as light as he's getting to keep his foot on it. This is the tightest part of this Detroit River course. It's shaped like an egg as we look at our third place boat. Old Boy Alberta with George Woods coming down the back chute after getting the late start. You've got to give him a lot of credit. This is a piston boat. It's a reciprocating engine. The two lead boats you see right there coming at you are turbine boats, and both of them are riding very light, an indication of tremendous speed upwards of 190 miles an hour on the straights, 142 for Chip Hanauer. Again, better than 140 miles an hour. He is really pushing. As we look at our fourth place boat, it's the Miss DOC Ray-Ban with Mitch Evans, and behind him, Miss Sundeck with Ron Snyder. He's getting a rough ride too, Dick. It certainly does. It appears that the Sun Deck is having a little bit of engine problem out there now. Good run for this boat. DOC Ray-Ban is hanging in there. Consistency could pay off. Yep, there was problem. Ron Snyder dead in the water in the Sun Deck boat. That boat is still being worked on. Hopefully they can pull it around. But look at this boat. In contrast, a great ride by Chip Hanauer. He's coming out of the final turn now, down the final straight. He'll take the checkered flag this time around. Everybody on the shoreline giving him a great big welcome home. Chip Hanauer, winner of Heat 1A. And he bested his heat lap competition record by 11 miles an hour. He set 134 plus back in 1984. Today, he bested that speed record by 11 miles an hour. Second place to Miss Budweiser, third to Old Boy Alberto. And now let's take a look at our scorecard after the first heat of action. This is the way they stand. Circus Circus, Budweiser, Alberto, Miss DOC, and the Sun Deck did not finish. Let's go to Dick Crippen in the pits. Dick? Well, Chip, that's got to feel pretty good to start the day in Detroit. Well, you know, you just take them one at a time, and uh, we just want to get into that final. Chip, you know that this was going to be a battle right from the start, matching you up with a Miss Budweiser. You went out there, you obviously put your foot right in it, going into turn number one, and you never let it out. Well, you know, we're real tight on national points, and we'd like to win as many heats as we can uh, without stretching the equipment. Again, the first priority is to win the race. Second priority is to national points. But we had an opportunity, and we'll take the points. So you get out there and run it hard. Did you feel threatened at it? Uh, oh, yeah. Jim was real fast, I think, especially those first two laps. I don't think I was moving away from him. Uh, so, you know, whenever the Budweiser's out there, you're threatened. Well, Chip, uh, certainly your boat has been running just flawlessly so far in this race. Coming into this race, though, some of the boats had problems like the Winston Eagle. Jim Hendrick is down the pit with the owner of that boat. In Steve Woomer's camp, it says, well, it's never over until the Winston Eagle screams. But up until now, it hasn't screamed very much. But in qualifying, looks like you might be ready on this one. Oh, I think we're re definitely ready today, Jim. Uh, every time we've run here in the last week, it's gotten faster and better and... Uh, you know, yesterday we did some running on some rough water, and the boat rides excellent. Uh, the Winston Eagle's definitely ready to go today. And there she sits in the water with driver Larry Lauderback, ready to race. We'll be back as they take the course in a moment. 
Dick Crippen along with Jim Hendrick back on the banks of the Detroit River and we want to welcome you to the Zenith Performance Corner sponsored by Zenith Data Systems. Zenith innovates again. New rule 1989, all boats must have a canopy. This is off an F-16 fighter plane. It protects the driver. It protects his office, if you will. Now, if the boat is upside down, like Scotty Pierce was in the Mr. Pringles last year, you come out the bottom end of the hatch. He has a breathing system, and he can also sustain breathing air until they can get to him. Also, the steering wheel down here is collapsible. Show him, Danny. All right, the steering wheel comes out. That gives him some room in this cockpit. He has a five-point harness, and there's communications, right? You talk, Danny High, to your driver all the time while he's running. Yeah, we try and keep Scott informed as to what's going on in the race course, if there's a problem also, who might be around him, because with the canopy, we've cut down a little bit of the visibility, but uh, we try and keep him informed as to what's going on. Do you think there could be any more improvements in, in a cockpit such as this? Oh, we're learning all the time. We've made uh, improvements since last year, and of course from our rec we learned quite a bit, and uh, we've, we've, we're continually improving the canopy, trying to make it safer. Everybody is here. Everybody's pretty safety conscious about what's going on. A little look inside the hydroplanes that you'll be seeing out here in a moment. The host of Miss Madison, driver Mike Hansen, Scott Pierce in the boat that we were just talking about. The GIF presents Mr. Pringles. Also on the course, the U-10, Winston Eagle, Larry Lauterbach. You met Steve Wilmer a few moments ago. And the U-88, Miss Detroit, Pierre Levine, driving that boat out of Canada. Paddock Poole, the U-7, Jerry Hopp, driving for Al Thurston, the owner. Here come the boats now. The Miss Madison just passing on our screen, leading the field up to the start. Looks like Mr. Pringles in good position out there now. Scotty Pierce in lane number one. As they come down, Winston Eagle is in lane number two. Two turbine boats side by side. And there you can see on the right of your screen, it is Scott Pierce in Jeff Presents Mr. Pringles. Winston Eagle, Larry Lauterbach trying to get the advantage of them as they go into turn number one. But it is going to be Jeff Presents Mr. Pringles. Scott Pierce has held him off momentarily. Look at how light Winston Eagle gets. Larry Lauterbach driving hard as they head out onto the back stretch. We're at 1B down the back street as it just presents Mr. Pringles with Scott Pierce. In the roost tail hidden is the Winston Eagle with Larry Lauterbach. The Holtz and Miss Madison is third and the Paddock Pools is back in fourth place. We look at our leader now coming down to that very dangerous corner number three, flying a little bit. That white spot comes right up. He tries to hang it on the hook. Whoa, he is getting a rough ride in that corner. No question about it, but he's holding it on the hook and manages to get it through. Scott Pierce doing a great job, and look at the challenge from the Winston Eagle. Steve Woomer just moments ago telling you that this boat was ready to run. It was getting faster each heat it went, and right now he is challenging for the lead. Winston Eagle on the left of your screen, and the turbine-powered Jeff presents Mr. Pringles on the right side. Two turbine boats out in front. As they come down the corner, number one for the second time at lap number two, it's the Mr. Pringles. Turning that wide oval down by the Detroit Boat Club, he'll come down the smoothest part of the course, the back shoot along Belle Isle, and then into that ever dangerous corner number three by the Detroit Yacht Club, the Titus Turn. And look, moving up in his roots tail, once again, the Winston Eagle with Larry Lauterbach pushing the Mr. Pringles for all it's worth. And no question, they were getting light coming down, and there is no backing off for Scott Pierce. Again, light coming into the turn. He manages to come. He loses it. He's up and over. The Mr. Pringles has crashed on the course. Larry Lauterbach missing him on the outside. Scotty Pierce inside the canopy. He is moving. You can see him inside the canopy, trying to check gauges and such. Mr. Pringles, Scott Pierce up and over in that dangerous rooster tail turn. Jim, it looked like the boat went over and started to come down on the backside, went into the water, boomeranged out, and actually flipped right side up again. So a good break for Scott Pierce there. And so far, you can see his wife, Jan, standing on the sidelines, looking out there now. But we saw that Scott was moving inside the cockpit. He went completely upside down, landed on that canopy. The force moved him right side up. You know he had to be disoriented, but he was smart enough to move his hands. Red flares are out this race to stop. Watch slow motion. He loses his hook, which is his kid fit. Now his stern is completely out of the water. His steering rudder, that's where he loses it all. Comes right upside down, takes the full force on the canopy. When the waves disappear, he's right side up. Eric Stalow and the rescue crew have removed the driver. He's on a 
stretcher right now. They're checking him over by rules. The wives, of course, are emotionally spent on the shore, and until they know their man is okay, but the URC radio says he's conscious, he's talking. The owner of the boat, Bill Wooster, must know the canopies have proved their worth. Well, it saved his life, there's no question about that. He's in good shape right now, he's on his way to the hospital, and um, the worst complaint that he had was that he had his ankle was sore, and um, I just can count my blessings and he can count his. Bill, you were watching the boat go around there. It was getting light coming down there. That wind picks up on that turn, and it's a bad one. Yes, it looked like we had got a gust of wind off the off the corner up here, and that's the thing that brought him up. Uh, you know, last year down in Miami was a near disaster, and uh, now we go through it again. I think the good Lord that nothing has happened to the, to Scott. Uh, well, the other thing, it doesn't deter Scott, and it doesn't deter you. No, we're going to go on. You'll see us at the next race. Okay, thank you very much, Bill, and we do uh, wish you the very best of luck getting things back together. The boat being towed in now, they're checking it out, and the driver already on shore being checked out. This is a race course that has seen an awful lot of uh, racing action. Jim Hendrick takes a look back at it. There has been more racing on this course than anywhere else in the history of water sports. You're looking at the historic Detroit Yacht Club in the background where, if it could speak, could tell you many tales of a Bill Muncy, a Dean Chenoweth, Guy Lombardo, the Shana family, Heritage... Well, it's right here in Detroit. This is the spawning ground of unlimited hydroplane racing, and it dates back to the late 20s and early 30s, where a guy by the name of Gar Wood and his riding mechanic, Orlin Johnson, captured the hearts of America in Miss America 10. Let's go back. 57 years ago, the legendary Gar Wood, along with riding mechanic Orlin Johnson, fired up four Packard engines and headed out for a record run attempt. Two runs through the traps, and they produced an average speed of 124 feet. Five miles an hour, a new record. We're very happy this morning because we have just brought back to the United States the world's record on water. Our speed was at an average of 124 and 9100 miles per hour. Band leader Guy Lombardo in his Temple 6 appeared regularly on the Detroit River. He was quite a competitor. And Danny Foster, builder and boat designer, held court on this river. His Miss Great Lakes was also driven by the legendary Bill Muncy at the start of his career. If these waters could talk, what stories they could tell. Just a little flashback on this famous course. And back to today now and what's happening on this course. The Hulsa Miss Madison will lead the field in the restart of Heat 1B. Winston Eagle, Larry Lauterbach will be back in action. Also in the field will be the Miss Detroit, Pierre Levine. Driving for Jerry Shaneth and Paddock Pools, the U7, Jerry Hopp, Al Thorson's boat. Well, they're racing. Jeff presents Mr. Pringles after the accident. It doesn't look as extensively damaged as we thought from the accident. They'll keep it in Detroit and prepare for the next race. We'll be back with more of the Budweiser Spirit of Detroit Regatta. Third stop in the HFC American Hydroplane Series, the restart of Heat 1B in just a moment. You're looking at the Detroit River in Detroit, Michigan, out toward Lake St. Clair now as the boats get ready for the restart of Heat 1B. The ship presents Mr. Pringles having gone over in the first start of this race and it red flagged it, meaning everybody stopped. Lane 1 coming up for the start. Winston Eagle, Lane 2, Miss Detroit. Olson, Miss Madison, Lane 3. And it appears, Jim, that the Paddock Pools did not start. The Gremlins fighting driver Jerry Hopp in this instance as they come down toward the Garwood Judges stand. And on the inside, the right of your screen, the brightly colored rocket red sled of the Winston Eagle. Boy, this could be a real morale booster for this crew. They've had some trouble getting this boat going, but it's been getting better and better each race. And if they could get a win in their pocket, I know Larry Lauterbach and Steve Woomer and crew would be extremely pleased because this is some river to beat. A river with great reputation, a good shot there as you see the Winston Eagle, leader of this race, riding out in second place now is the Holson Miss Madison, Mike Hansen, the boat that's owned by the citizens, residents of Madison, Indiana, 13,000 strong. There you see the boat, and again we point out they haven't even seen this boat race yet, Jim, because it came on the circuit last year after the Madison Regatta. After this race, we'll head for Madison, Indiana, the Ohio River. They'll get a good look at it. We're coming around to complete lap number one. Pretty good time for the Winston Eagle. About 125 mile an hour as he comes down toward the starting line for the second time. He looks like he's just about all alone, but here is the whole St. Miss Madison, second place, coming off of corner number four, down by the pit area. 
taking it through that slop of that very dangerous corners number three and four by the rooster tail. There it is, I said close to 125, not too far off. <laughs> we'll give you that one, 124.948. Here's Miss Detroit riding in third place now. This is a good opportunity for the turbine-powered Winston Eagle, Larry Lauterbach, the driver, to get out in front, test the waters, find out how he can run the boat. He's already watched one accident happen almost right in front of him in the last start of this race. So now he knows where the holes are and he's gonna see what his boat can do, but he has no competition around him at the moment. So although it is something of a Sunday afternoon drive, he still has the ability to judge the course a little bit better and find out by pushing the boat a little bit what he can expect from his Winston Eagle. And pick up 400 perfect points for a first place finish. And remember, only the five top point getters get the run for the money. And here comes the checkered flag for the winner of the restart of Heat 1B, Steve Boomers, Winston Eagle, driven by Larry Lauterbach. Second place coming off of corner number four for 300 points will be the whole set Miss Madison. So it's got to be a happy time for Steve Boomer and his crew down there. Larry Lauterbach, the driver. There you see second place for the whole set Miss Madison. Second to the Winston Eagle that we were just talking about. And third place will go to the Miss Detroit Pierre Levine. There you can see Paddock Pools, a sad story for Jerry Hopp. Didn't even get to take the restart of Heat 1B. Now here's quite a story. This is the Miss Detroit. This was a boat built for a special class of uh, hydroplane racing. It's been converted over now to an unlimited and it is being run with automobile power. Here's the results of Heat 1B. Winston Eagle, of course, taking the win. Miss Madison, Miss Detroit, Paddock Pools without the start. Jim is with the winner of Heat 1B. Well, guys, it's been a little while, but you got one under your belt. How about it, Larry? Well, that was kind of a gift there, Jim. Uh, you know, Scotty and I had a pretty good heat going in uh, 1B early in the day, and uh, he got upside down. So this is a rerun of that heat, and we hate to see Scotty get out of the race like that. Boy, that's a, a big blow to their team and into our sport today. We lost a big boat, you know, a good boat, but Winston Eagle was running fine. I just took it easy out there and just made five laps and survived. Steve, sitting on the shore, sometimes it's tough for an owner. Uh, yeah, I've been through those before, and it's not very pleasant. And that Definitely takes a little of the the glow off of uh, winning this heat with that happen to Scotty, but thank God he's safe and uh, and the canopies good shape. work. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. We move right along with our racing as we get ready for Heat 2A. Holson Miss Madison in this one. Mike Hansen, the driver. Also, the U7 Paddock Pools had trouble starting in the last race, but let's see if he can get going this time. The Boss Marine Sports, known as Sun Deck. Ron Snyder, the driver in the U9, the U2, oh boy, Oberto, George Woods Jr., a boat that's been very consistent. And here's the Cooper's Express, this race known as DOC Ray-Ban. And here they come for the start of Heat 2A. As they come around the rooster tail turn, heading down toward the car, Woods judges stand on the inside lane, number one, Ron Snyder, the sun deck, right in the middle of the pack, oh boy, Oberto. And on the outside, boat on your left is the Hope set Miss Madison, Dick. Good start for this totally piston-powered field, and that is a rarity in unlimited hydroplane racing today. There you see the start of Heat 2A. No turbine entries in this particular field. Paddock pools way in the background. You can see Jerry Hopp having his problems again as Rooster Tail is down. He's looked like he may be headed back into the pit area, but he certainly is not up on plane like he wanted to be. Taking off into the lead now is oh boy, Oberto George Woods Jr. This is a boat to watch. It has challenged more than its share of turbines throughout last season, and he's really got it running fine this year. As you can see, he comes out a little bit light out of turn number one, corner number two, down the back stretch now toward the Detroit Yacht Club. Now this is where the water starts roughing up a little bit. You'll see the Yacht Club as it comes into view and you can see where the pilings are such that it'll back the water onto the course. Boat number two in position is Holson Miss Madison, Mike Hansen, the driver. He also is on the back stretch now, about six boat lanes separating the leader and second place. A good run for George Woods in Oh Boy, Alberto. Not pushing it too hard. There are no turbines in the field, and George Woods knows he just wants 400 points to try to get into that winner take all final as he's hitting some slop coming off of corner number four to come to complete lap number one. Here is the 
Miss Sundeck, driven by Ron Snyder. Here's that battle for first place. A boat on your left is Hold Set Miss Madison, trying to move up 112.233 mile an hour on our Zenith Data Systems computer as they crack into number two lap. And we might say that all of our speeds being shown on the screen are lap speeds. That means it includes, in essence, four corners and two straightaways. So they have to come off it a little bit in the corners because they have to slide the boat through. There's your third place entry right now, Miss DOC Rayban. And Mitch Evans is having a pretty good ride in that boat. It's been very consistent through the day. Let's tell the people that are watching this program today that 112.2 means 155 mile an hour in the straightaway and to get that average speed because they must slow down in the turns. Hanging on the hook, you cannot bank water. The turns are flat, they must decrease speed. And some problems for the Miss Sundeck. Ron Snyder having problems. He had problems earlier and had to go out of one of the heats. Now he's got him again in this one and more problems for Paddock Pools. Jerry Hopp with the best seat in the house, but he traded for a run in the field right now. We have over 600,000 people watching this one today on a sunny day in Detroit. The checker flag is out, Dick. They're coming down for the win and there's old boy Alberto getting the checkered flag from the starters tower. Second place will go to the Hulse at Miss Madison. Mike Hansen, and he'll feel good about that. They've just been getting that boat all tricked out and ready to go for the entire circuit. It's running well for the citizens of Madison, Indiana, getting ready to go down there in the next stop on this 1989 tour of Unlimited Hydros. There's the Miss DOC Ray-Ban. That's Mitch Evans. And that boat out of Evansville, Indiana, takes third place in Heat 2A. So oh, Heat 2A is now history. Let's check the scoreboard here in Detroit, Michigan. Old Boy Alberto first, Miss Madison second, Miss DOC Ray-Ban third, Paddock Pools and Sundeck Dick not finished. Let's go down to the pit area. Well, George, a good run out there. Uh, you didn't have an awful lot of competition going for you off there, but that can be an, an advantage for preparing for later. Yeah, it was kind of a nice, easy heat. It's one of the best ones we've ever drawn. Drove all Pistons heat, this heat. So it's kind of nice to run against people of our own caliber, more or less. Turbines are a little tough to race with, so it was kind of, it's kind of fun. Jim Hendrick and Dick Griffin from the Budweiser Spirit of Detroit race. And when we return, we'll look at an exciting new team. Back here on the Detroit River, three turbines will go head to head. Heat 2B. Earlier, Dick Crippen had a chance to take a close look at the Circus Circus team. Dick? Well, certainly one team that attracts a lot of attention when it comes to town is Circus Circus. You just can't miss the pink. And the man who's responsible for the overall operation of the team is Mel Larson. And Mel, this team is outstanding. And it's a new team this year already with some good plaudits to its success. Uh, well, they're very high, and they have been all along. And you say this is the first year for it, but they've been together now night and day for six months, you know, working all winter. So it isn't like they show up the first race and they start working together. They've had to work together and under a lot of pressure. Uh, building completely rebuilding two boats and the entire team so uh, you know it's like they've been together for 10 years because they've got almost 10 years worth of hours together. Chip let's talk about the team this is this is a good experience. I believe that this team is really going to be the place to be in the next three years I think there's more potential here than any team I've ever been involved with. For you to walk right into this as the crew chief on on this team you've you've had to have a lot of good support and and I know the team has certainly given you that. Yeah, we have uh, support from uh, Mr. Bennett at Circus Circus, from Mel Larson. Uh, Chip's been supportive. Uh, the whole team as a whole has, has grown together to do what we plan to do at the beginning of the year, and that is build a team. Now let's take a check on the combatants for Heat TV. The Budweiser, Jim Crockfell, looking for a victory in this heat. Pierre Levine, the Frenchman, driving Miss Detroit, the automotive bar boat. Larry Lauterbach looking for a second consecutive heat victory here today in the Winston Eagle. And Chip Hanauer, also a winner earlier in heat action, will drive the Circus Circus. Jim, this is going to be a battle royal, sort of a finale early in the day. These boats know that they've still got a big head-to-head -head match coming up later today. Winston Eagle out in lane number three. Lane number one is the Miss Budweiser, lane two, Circus Circus. Boy, what a heads-up start that was. Circus Circus getting a little bit light in the center of your screen as they come down to turn number one. It is Budweiser on the inside with the lead. 
Budweiser coming strong into the turn right now. Circus Circus is even up with the Winston Eagle. Winston Eagle is closest to you as they come through the turn. Whoa, they are screaming through corners number one and two down the back chute here on the Detroit River. All three turbines missed Detroit. The automotive power boat did not start. And we look at the leader getting very light. I don't know if he realizes he was that light coming down toward corner number one. It's Miss Budweiser, Jim Cropfield, leading the way, the short way around the course. He gets into the tight corners number three and four, down by the rooster tail, and look at him fly. We are seeing an exact reverse of what happened earlier today when the Circus Circus was leading. The push boat now is Circus Circus. Out in front is the Miss Budweiser. Circus Circus set a competitive lap speed at 145 miles an hour. Look at this, 144.346 for the Miss Budweiser. Jim Cropfeld is really pouring on the coals. That is close to the record. That was set just a heat ago, and they're not letting up. They're not letting up. Look at them fly as they come down by the Detroit Boat Club and head toward the Detroit Yacht Club on the eastern end of the course. Still, it's the Budweiser, but you can see the spray. Here's your third place boat, the Winston Eagle with Larry Lauterbach coming down the back chute. They're all on the same straightaway. Lots of action, and this is exactly where the trouble starts as they come down that back chute and hit by the Detroit Yacht Club. Things start getting real loose on those boats. As you can see, the Winston Eagle holding it well as she goes into the turn now. Larry Lauterbach grabs into the turn with that skid fin, throws that second rooster tail high in the air. Look at the hop as he comes out of the turn, sliding the boat around. Meanwhile, on the other end of the course, you can see Miss Budweiser through the turn, still on her tail, is Circus Circus. Chip Hanauer is not letting up a bit. He's held it in there at less than two boat lengths all the way around. A record, 145.843 on the Xena Data Systems computer. That bested the record set just about an hour ago by this boat, the Circus Circus Chip Hanauer. Well, as weather conditions continue to be near perfect here in Detroit, a little bit of gusty wind comes up on the back stretch, and that lifts the Circus Circus high out of the water. I don't think that uh, they're going to be able to beat that record just set by the Miss Budweiser in this heat anyway. Still three turbine boats going very strong. Third place, just off the pace, is the Winston Eagle, Larry Lauterbach. Here's the Miss Budweiser. This is your leader. Jimmy Cropfell took it right off the gun and has not let first place go. He is held in there and he has held off the challenge of Circus Circus. There's the checkered flag coming out now. What a run for the Miss Budweiser. Jim Cropfeld has got to be feeling good about the way that boat is run. I don't think Chip Hanauer is disappointed at all in the performance of the Circus Circus either. He's going to take a second place here on the Detroit River. And Dick. Bernie Little has to be happy. His boat is set. Two records, a two and a half mile competition lap record, 145.8, a 12 and a half mile heat record on a two and a half mile course with an average speed of 142.7. Scoreboard shows Miss Budweiser first, Circus Circus second, Winston Eagle third, Miss Detroit did not start. Let's go to the pits. Well, how does that feel? Record and all. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> <laughs> that boat held beautifully out there though, Jim. Well, we, we, we got it nailed down pretty good. I want to play it safe. I don't want to do like poor Scott did in the, the other heat there. And uh, we're, I have to drive it real hard because we're making it very safe. And that's the way we want to run it. Uh, you know, the Detroit River's got a lot of problems out there that I know exactly where they are. So uh, we just play it by ear and, and uh, just run it. It's about all we can do. Bernie, I know you were out here watching when Scott went and you knew exactly what was going on with that boat. And I know you were watching your boat for the same thing. Oh, yes, I was. Uh, but. Uh, he had it really under control. That's the best ride that he's had here on the river in the boat. And uh, Miss Budweiser is doing his thing, and so is Jim. And we'll be in there giving him one hell of a race. The final field is set for the Budweiser Spirit of Detroit race on the HFC American Hunt Plane Series. We'll have those finals next. We're back in Detroit now getting ready for the final heat. This is some damage to the Winston Eagle. Larry Lauterbach apparently catching a little part of a rooster tail and Jim we talked so many times about the power of the rooster tail being equivalent to some seven tons of water and it, it literally ripped up part of the decking on the front of the boat. Yeah it's uh, really a weapon that's why they have that three boat overlap rule you can see right here in slow motion he'll take a dive right there and the rooster tail off of the lead boat just literally hits you like a fire hose. 
Well, they have taped it up and they have put a little bit of fiberglass coating on it and they'll hope to hold it together for this, the final heat. I'll tell you what, it is really taped up all the way around, too. We didn't realize how much damage had been done to it. Here's the starting lineup. U31 Circus Circus Chip Hour. He's defending champ on this uh, particular course. Miss Budweiser, the U1 Jim Cropfeld would like to end that string. The old boy Oberto, U2 George Woods Jr. Certainly one to contend with in the piston powered group. Uh, back to the turbines, the Winston Eagle U10, Larry Lauder back. Another piston boat is the wholesome Miss Madison, the U6. Mike Hansen, the alternate boat, Cooper's Express, known today as the Miss DOC Ray-Ban, Mitch Evans, the driver. And here they come, down by the rooster tail to make that run along the Detroit River shoreline. It'll be the Winston Eagle in lane number one, Circus Circus lane two, Budweiser in lane three, Holt in Miss Madison in lane four, and on the outside, Old Boy Alberto. It is a good start for these boats as they come down, lined up perfectly. The white flag is pulled in, and we are off. This is the start of the final heat here in Detroit. Perfect conditions weather-wise. And as we come down into the first corner of turn number one, it is going to be the Budweiser. Jim Cropfeld in the Budweiser has taken the lead. Circus Circus is trying to close. Also, the Winston Eagle right up in there. Budweiser is leaving them in the wake as he goes down by the Boat Club turn. Budweiser in the lead. Jimmy Cropfeld, look at that boat gets light. He's going up, up and over. Jim Cropfeld has crashed by the Detroit Boat Club. He is underwater at this time. The boat is upside down. Jimmy Cropfeld losing it as he goes into the second corner of turn number one. Now here's where those airtight cockpits come to bear. He is upside down. He has the breathing apparatus. There comes the rescue crew. They'll go underneath the water, tap on the canopy, let him know they're there. Then you'll see them mount the boat from the bottom. They'll open up a special hatch and have to pull that driver out. He was leaving everybody like a scalded ape. Bernie Little, much concerned. He's been there before, his team talking it over. But he had a big lead and did not let up between quarters one and two. They're pulling him out of the boat now, Dick. There he is, Jimmy Cropfeld. You can see him with the helmet on. And as we look at him out there being rescued, let's take another look at how the accident happened. He got airborne. He literally lost it as they came down around that turn. He goes in and hits down on his left sponson, which slowed the boat a little bit, but the boat continued to go over. Now, here's another angle on it. Yeah, did not watch. Now, he hits a bounce right there. He has not taken his foot out of it. He's starting to fly. Look at the skid fin hanging down. He's losing control. Once the prop and the rudder come off and out of the water, he's helpless. He flies it, does a 180 with a twist. It is on the left side, smashes in stern first, flops over upside down. Report we're getting from the URC medical team on the course. He's okay, he's talking, They're examining him. Let's go down to the pit area. Dick has Bernie Little on hand. Dick? Well, Bernie, uh, this one you weren't planning for. Well, no, Dick. Uh, Miss Budweiser went off uh, in third uh, lane three and uh, circus in lane two, and uh, uh, another boat was in lane one. I couldn't even really see who it was, but uh, uh, boy, he smoked him down to that first turn and looked like he was four or five boat lengths out in front and all of a sudden he wasn't there anymore. So I don't know what happened. He literally did leave the other two boats behind as he went down into that turn and as he came out he just kind of caught it and it flew. That's yeah. basically it. I uh, saw a rerun on TV just now and uh, it, it just started climbing and it just hung there and uh, uh, but boy, he, he really went over. But I think R.J. Reynolds was on the inside uh, or the Winston Eagle and uh, I don't know what happened to him. He sure smoked him out. Well, Bernie, I, how many times have you been down and saying to the big man, thanks for those capsules? I mean, you have seen yeah. that pay off time and time and yeah. time again. Twice today, in fact. Uh, I must tell you, I just called August Bush and thanked him for the capsule because he's a man that made it all possible. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, we're sure glad to have it. And uh, if it wasn't without it, I don't know what we'd do. We'd be out of boat racing. Jimmy's condition. Excellent. Uh, just left him, and uh, uh, he's coming back saying, "If can we run in the final heat?" You know, but uh, we're taking him to hospital to make sure his neck's okay, and uh, uh, you know, he'll he, Jim's a tough one, and he'll be fine. They'll have to clear the course for the second time today, and we'll have a restart of the finals in just a moment. 
Dick Griffin along with Jim Hedrick, Detroit, Michigan. This is the restart of the final heat. The Miss Budweiser has been towed in dockside now. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. U31, lane one, U10, Winston Eagle in lane two. The U6, Holson, Miss Madison in lane three. And DOC Rayban, the alternate, is now in the field. U3 in lane number four. And there they go for the start. As they come down to the Carwood starting line, on the inside is the Circus Circus with Chip Manauer, but right off his hip in the center of the pack is the Winston Eagle as they come down to corner number one, and they are again getting flighty, walking Sponson to Sponson. I can bet that we'll see these boats back off as they go into that turn where the Budweiser went over just a few moments ago. There is Circus Circus, and he's holding very firm on the water right now. This is Chip Hanauer, who has a win streak that is the envy of every driver here on this river. He has always had good fortune in Detroit. Right now, his boat is operating flawlessly, as is the Winston Eagle, now in second place. Larry Lauderback driving that boat, and this has got to be the kind of race day that's a great morale booster to it. They have overcome some obstacles in the Winston Eagle, as you saw earlier. We had some damage to that boat that was done by one of the rooster tails. They got it repaired. The boat is up and running. This boat has had probably the best day on the circuit of all the boats. Circus Circus in the lead, Winston Eagles second, and right now the Hulse at Miss Madison is riding in third. 137.447 miles an hour for lap number one, and you know now that he has backed up. He'll only use what he has to do to win and maintain the lead. Here's our fourth place boat, the Miss DOC, Ray-Ban, currently running behind the third place Hulse at Miss Madison. Circus Circus, still the lead boat and still holding control. Good job of driving. Look at how firm that boat is on the water as he comes out of the turns. Remember again, these boats actually slide across the top of the water. There's a disappointing story. George Woods Jr., he had a great day going for himself, but he has gone down in the final heat this afternoon. Still in second place with all the tape all over the nose of the hydroplane, Larry Lauderback in the Winston Eagle. Boy, going from a soft pink to a bright red, that's what the fans along the river are seeing today as our leader is down in the boat club, turned down near the Belle Isle Ridge, and he'll come down the back chute, still leading by about four boat lengths over the second place, Winston Eagle. Here's your third place, Olsen, Miss Madison, with Mike Hansen at the wheel. And the last lap by the lead boat, Circus Circus, better than 131 miles per hour. He is down considerably to what he was in the first race out here today when he set a record and then of course that record was broken later for the Miss Budweiser but Chip Hanauer right now has got himself a checkered flag in his sights and he is taking dead aim at it he is riding just hard enough to hold it in another boat has gone down on the course the U3 Miss DOC Ray-Ban it's clearing out for Chip Hanauer he's got good water all the way and if he can maintain the lead he'll become the third different winner in the first three races Miss Budweiser winning at Houston, Texas, or Clear Lake, should I say. In Miami, it was Jeff presents Mr. Pringles, and now the Circus Circus could become the third winner in as many races in the unlimited HFC American High Plate Series. And the crowd is cheering. The checkered flag is out. Chip Hanauer, in fact, does do it. He becomes the third winner on the circuit in as many races. Circus Circus, Chip Hanauer, winner of the Detroit race. Second place and a fine finish for the Winston Eagle team. Goes to Larry Lauderback in the rocket red Winston Eagle. And third place will be coming across momentarily. There was a little bit of a gap there between second and third, but there is the Holson Miss Madison revving up and preparing for an appearance for the first time in the hometown of Madison, Indiana. An exciting day, and here's the final order of finish here in Detroit, Michigan. Now let's go to the pits and Dick Crippen. Well, Chip, I guess you could say Detroit been very, very, very good to you. Yeah, it has. You have to really respect this place or it bites you bad, and we saw that today. But more than that, I'm just happy with what this team's doing. Dave Vilwak is doing a stupefyingly great job, and the guys behind him are supporting him. And I tell you, in the next two or three years, if you're a boat racer, this is the team to be. <laughs> well, you've been saying that all along. Dave, you've raced around a lot. You know this river. This has to be special for you. Uh, this is a tough place to race, and, you know, uh, Chip did a great job. The rest of the team, it's a real team concept that we've tried to build here, and, and everybody came through, when, and when every, everyone else was blinking, we were just striding ahead. 
Mel, it had to be hardest on you standing on the sidelines after what's been happening here today. Well, that's right. In fact, I didn't watch the last lap. I told him to tell me how it was coming out. I felt it was going to be there, but I didn't want to be disappointed. But we've got a, you know, a great thing. We got Chip, the greatest driver. We got Dave Vilwak, who's proved that he's the greatest crew chief. We got the greatest boat, the greatest team, and uh, HFC sponsoring a thing like this. How can we go wrong? But also, we got our chairman of the board, William G. Bennett, who lets us go do these things and do it right. Here's the HFC High Point standings through the first three races of the year. Circus Circus leads the pack over Miss Budweiser, Oboy Alberto, Miss Madison. An exciting day of racing here on the Detroit River. The tough courses, we said at the beginning of this program, the toughest they would have to negotiate. Wind, water, and boy, I'll tell you, with the actions we saw today, just thank God nobody was hurt. Jim, we used the word survival when we talked about this at the beginning of the show, and survival was exactly what it was about. I'm happy to report both drivers, Jimmy Cropfeld, Scott Pierce, are okay. They're going to get back into racing. Their boats will be back on the circuit at the next stop. It just goes to prove the safety capsule was the way to go. This is the first year that all drivers have been required to have those capsules and already it's paying off. No doubt about it. Of course, Winston Eagle showed a big improvement over the first two races. Circus Circus, you bet. They have been fast all week. They deserve the win. Now take it. Three different winners in the first three races. Budweiser in Houston, Pringles in Miami, and in Detroit. Of course, Circus Circus. That's right, and uh, I have to tell you that Chip, of course, was very, very elated on the dock, and that's what he was thinking about, the improving of the boat. He said it's a new crew. It's a crew that he wants to work with. He thinks it's the crew of the future. Well, that's yet to be told, and we'll tell that story in the upcoming weeks. Lots of excitement here on the Detroit River. On behalf of Dick Crippen, I'm Jim Hendrick. So long. The HFC American Hydroplane Series is sponsored by Budweiser. Beechwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Household Finance Corporation, America's financial resource. has been a production of IPI Sports.